the water. Okay. And let's see. Um, so who's, I know that I'm here, Jim's here. I think I just saw Dan. Dan's here, yeah. And Kelly? I'm here. Anybody else from the? Yeah, I'm here. No, no, obviously. Anybody else? For the record. That's it. Okay. So, um, let's see. First thing, I want to approve the minutes from September 23rd. I make a motion to approve the minutes from September 23rd. Do I have a second? Second. second. Any uh, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Next is uh, the chief. Fire chief. Talk to us. Well, good evening, everybody. We um the only the only proposal we have um, for CIC basically came. We weren't going to have anything, but um, unfortunately. Our radio system in the fire station um, went down. It is, it's the original um, alerting system that was put in 30 years ago. So um, fixing it is not an option. So um, having said that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Deputy Poirier who um, was um, involved in the project and getting um, what we need to uh, correct the issue. Deputy? All right, thank you, Chief. Uh, good evening, everybody. So what we have here is a, uh, it's an alerting system that sends out the messages from dispatch. It, um, it, it, it's what puts us out the door. It's what sends us on the call. Um, right now, we are using some uh, old time pager, uh, a paging system that is antiquated and has failed on uh, a, a couple occasions. Uh, we've, we've pieced it back together for now. We're hoping that we got our fingers crossed that it's gonna continue working until we get this uh, system in. So what the system does is uh, it, it, it's, it's, worked, it's worked through dispatch. Dispatch will send a signal to either station one, station two, or both stations, alerting us that there's a call uh, it'll send us out. It turns the lights on. It um, it basically it basically is a control uh, system that alerts us for a call and gets us ready to move out. Uh, I worked with um, with Pam uh, from the IT department. Uh, the reason for the change in the quote uh, as of uh, as is, uh, as today's quote, the most recent was uh, we had some different um, different issues. When this, this company's known as Zetron, that's the name of the company, they came in and uh, they actually did a walkthrough at the police station. We went over everything and there was some questions back and forth. And uh, from Pam and Karen, we uh, fixed the problems. We were able to utilize uh, a piece of the system, the um, uh, one of the laptops inside the, the server room, uh, we were able to util utilize that as a server itself. So that's why there was a reduction in the uh, cost. It's not a big reduction, but we, we, we were able to get some of it down. Um, so currently this, the cost of the system is, hold on one second. All right, never mind. Um, so it's $106,991.40. Uh, that is including installation, uh, all the computer work, and uh, all the equipment that's installed. Uh, this is a state bid, so we don't have to go out to bid for this. And um, I'll entertain any questions anybody has at this time. So does the uh, does the current system turn the lights on and stuff like that? It does not. And does, is that all part of this? Yes, it is. This is a this is a, a everything we need 
to move into the 20th century uh, with this with this equipment? Okay, Chief, I'd hope you don't want to move into the 21st century. No, no, we'll 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 no, be grateful with the 20th. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Mark. Yes. Mr. Chair, is it okay if I ask a couple questions? Right ahead. Okay. So, Mark, I didn't see a revised price quote. Did that get sent out today? Yeah, I'm sorry. I sent it to uh, the uh, CIC uh, because it was last minute. I just sent it to her, uh, them, and uh, and the chief. So, um, I'll get you that tomorrow if it's okay. Okay. Um, I'm actually all right. Anytime. Forwarding it to Mary right now. Nope. Oh, Thank you, Tina. Great. No problem. All right. So. Mark, when did you guys meet with Karen? Because I know that she had had some concerns about how and where this was going to fit in with the dispatching station and all of the equipment and infrastructure that was already there. Yeah, great question because uh, there were some issues uh, with the size of the laptops that are going to be installed in dispatch. And uh, those have been resolved. They found some smaller uh, towers and they'll fit inside the uh, the area for dispatch. And uh, that was the other problem was the uh, um, the server room. Uh, it, we didn't have any room to put another server, but Pam actually found out a way to attach it to, uh, there's actually a laptop that's used as a server. I don't know the, all the technical stuff, Mary, I apologize. But uh, uh, Pam was able to figure that out and, um, and we, we can use it that way. Okay. And is this the only company that we have gotten a quote from? Are there other competitors that are out there that offer a similar product at a different price point? We did. And uh, this was the cheapest. And I'll, I'll get you the other price point and, uh, and show it to you guys. Um, okay. so, but this was the lowest uh, quote. We only and had what does only this... two quotes. Okay. And what does this do uh, in terms of annual operating costs? Is, is there software licensing, other a service contract that goes with this? Um, and how does it compare to what you're paying today versus what would be um, the expected costs going forward? Well, the, the honest truth is we're not paying anything today because uh, it's, yeah. just a, it's just an electronic pager that, that alerts us inside the station. So we don't have any cost associated with that. So I'm sure I, I can't answer that exactly because I don't know the the licensing uh, aspect of it. Uh, that's something that Pam was working on. So I, I'm sure there is a cost, but I, I can't answer, uh, tell you exactly how much. Okay. All right. Um, and have you talked with, so I, I presume that Gary, um, who I just met the other day for the very first time is gonna yeah. would be the guy who does the installation. Uh, no, Zetron does the installation. Okay, so but Gary would be doing our day to day support from you know a triage perspective. Has has he taken a peek at it? Uh, Gary will not be doing the support. Zetron takes care of everything. It's a um, uh, actually I was in the office when Pam and. Uh, Pam was asking those questions. Um, they okay. have, uh, I believe it might be a service contract. That's, um, okay. I, I, so I think, I think right now with this price, it might be for the first five or six years, I think we have a service contract. Is that yeah, in this, here? You know, this, this, also this also will take care of station one as well. Yeah, station one does not have anything right now. All it has is a, um, uh, a mobile radio that's attached to a couple speakers. That's it. Okay. So, I guess I'm not seeing the maintenance, the service aspect of that here. Yeah, I'm not seeing it either. So I'll check with Pam in the morning to just double check on, uh, on the service itself. Because yeah, I can't the, see it either. Yeah, the quote, the quote's not really saying anything about licensing either. Well, that's going to be from us. We're going to, uh, 
IT department needs to set up uh, this is IP addresses. So, and uh, the radio right. stuff. Right. Right. In fact, it's CTA quote. Right. And this, and this is compatible with our existing dispatch software. Yes. Did you hear me, Mary? I said yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Yep. So, You're in my ear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so where is Zetron located? If they're gonna do, if they're gonna do the, if they're gonna do support for this thing, where are they? Georgetown, Massachusetts. Do they have anybody that's authorized nearby? No, I think they're they're the sole uh, sole supporters. Um, so uh, so while we were looking at this, uh, the towns of Hopedale, Milford. Uh, the city of Woonsocket, they all utilize the same company to, uh, to run their systems. So we, um, we took a ride one day to look at Woonsockets. Um, I've been down Hopedale to see their uh, operations. Um, it's a very, uh, very good system according to them. So um, uh, very reliable. Roland, have you ever heard of B and B Engineering Corporation? I have not. Okay, to be honest. All right, M Mr. Chairman. So, oh, yes. go ahead, Mary. Go ahead. Uh, uh, no, I'm just. No, go ahead. I'm just, go ahead Dan. Uh, all right, so I'm just uh, looking at this. It seems as though this is more of a hardware type thing. Yep. So as far as licensing and, and that goes, um, it doesn't. I don't, and I could be completely wrong. I usually am, but. It seems like it's more of um, the, the hardware, and then we have the service plan in case there are upgrades that we need to make to the software. But it doesn't, I don't think licensing would come into play here. But I'm thinking if we already own the IP addresses, yeah, then we, we don't have to pay for those either. So that's what it sounds like to well, me. So, well, I, IP well, addresses kind of are like a phone number that, that you know, that's that, that's so the, the question is, is, is there a software component to this? How does this work? Exactly. There's got to be some software because it's got to integrate and, and automate sending out the tones and the signals. So it might be proprietary software that they've developed for the system, um, in which right. case you'd license it. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I think that's why they have the service program, because usually when you're on a service program that has software like that, usually the software upgrades will be part of the program. Mm -hmm. yep. I, I, okay. I assume. I, again, I don't know. I could be wrong. But we don't have a cost for the service program, right? Right. I don't. Oh, the initial cost? I thought I thought the initial cost included a five-year service program. Did yeah. I hear that wrong? Uh, we're not seeing it in there. Okay. All right. I apologize. No worries. So I guess, um, so Mark and, and um, Chief, have you guys had a conversation with Dennis at all about this particular project? I have. And a, that you have and about yes. potentially delaying it until November, just given our financial constraints here. I I had that conversation with Mr. Frain and um, okay, he wishes that uh, if we can get through to that meeting, that's what he would prefer. Yeah. yeah. So I for those of you who haven't been um, involved in our day, daily and I guess bi daily conversations that we we've been having. Um, you know, we're taking a look at, given the, the crisis that's going on um, and what's happening with the economy, we are seeing some um, downturns, obviously, in some of our revenue streams, um, certainly our local revenues with um, meal tax, local um, motor excise taxes, um, penalties and fees, other things. Um, we're seeing a decline in revenue in the current fiscal year, which we anticipate is going to continue into the next fiscal year. Um, but we're also very concerned about what's going to happen to not only our state aid for the current year, as well as the, the next fiscal year, but any impacts that there might be on state and federal grants. Um, to some extent, the town relies on some state and federal grants to provide some of the programs and services that we offer. But to a much greater extent, the school department relies on state and federal grants. Um, and they, in fact, pay some of their staff members, their teachers and their paraprofessionals um, out of some of these grant funds. And um, right now, given the uncertainty in the economy and, and what's going on, we're not entirely sure what kind of reductions to anticipate in those funding sources um, for our ongoing operations. So 
um, what we're trying to do is take a, a real close look at what we intend to bring forward for Springtown meeting and try to hold back as much as we can um, if that's at all possible. And so I, you know, Dennis and I have had several conversations about that and we're trying to figure out what it is that we can push off until the fall versus what we need to do right now. So I guess my question for you guys is, is it possible if we had to push this to the fall, could we do that? The only, the only thing I'm worried about, Mary, is that if we say, you know, yeah, right now the system's, um, the system's uh, half working or whatever, we got it, we finagled it. If the system totally goes down again, um, it's going to have to be replaced. So I don't know, you know, it, I get, you know what I mean? I, I just, we need some plan in place on if we can't, if it goes down altogether and we can't fix it to get it back up and running again, what do we do? So if the system went down tonight, what would you do? Not go to a fire? Call Gary around a lot. And uh, I don't even know what that means. We, we would use we would use portables, um, which is not the most secure because sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Uh, so, due to the in, be, being inside the building, they may not have the uh, uh, strength of uh, uh, getting the signal out. So, um, but but for the most part that's what we'd end up doing going with a portable which wouldn't turn the lights on which wouldn't do uh get us out the door um but the system doesn't turn the lights on today so yeah uh, right but, that, it, but, right? What, but what we're trying to do is become better not not get worse well i i, I understand but turning the lights on is not the difference maker in, in my mind I, I'm, no, just we, to, I'm just trying to figure in terms of getting to to, to september october whenever it is you know, the, what would you have to do? What would be the, what's the backup plan? And you need a backup plan because I don't know when this thing would get installed, but even if you went to a June town meeting now, uh, you know, it wouldn't be in before July. What happens in, in between now and then, I guess is the question. Oh no, it, it, it would take a while to uh, install and get the materials. So, um, okay. because they have to build the system at Zetron. Okay. So that, that all, you know, I think that goal goes to the point in terms of, you know, what's the backup. But I, I'm not against this. I mean, obviously, we need to have communications, and we want to do the thing right, so to speak. And that's $106,000. Um, although we don't know what the operating cost will be, it would be good to know that what the maintenance is going to be. Uh, uh, I'm going to I'm going to call it. I'm going to call Pam quickly yeah. and see if I can get an answer on the software. All right. Just give me a second. Yep. Uh, hey, Roland. Do you, yeah. Uh, real quick. So I just and Mary, you can interject on this one. Obviously, we have uh, a lot of unknowns as far as budget goes. Um, but as far as the protocol for CIC, you it's know, what's that? It's not the money. No, it, it's it's we we vote on the project, and right. yep. as far as the funding mechanism goes, that's to be determined by. So should we yep. just go ahead and treat this yep. as though? Budget is going as normal, and 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 vote on the, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, the credibility of the project. Yeah, we we should be looking at the need and whether or not this is the right thing. Okay, right. That's that. And that's so. As far as you know, like I said, we're there's a lot of unknowns because yeah. there's so much unknown. Yeah. Um, but if we can at least vote on this, yay or nay, if there is funding available going forward. Boom. It's there. It's already been voted on. If we have to wait till fall, it's still already been voted on. Yep. So that's, that's my point. Yeah, I agree. What did you find out? Anna? Uh, unable to get a hold of her. She didn't answer. So she's probably busy. <laughs> All right. that, that happens to you a lot, Mark, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Once they see my number, that's it. No one wants to talk to me. <laughs> so that being said, do we want to make a motion on this? Yeah, in our mind, I'll make a motion that we uh, appropriate recommend to the finance committee funding being available to support this project. I will second. Okay. Any other comments or discussion? I will say that they have this in Rentham and it, it works quite well. I mean, it, it, there's no way that a fireman cannot hear the tone when it goes off in the building, remotely, and 
second station. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a good system and they're very reliable. Okay, any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. All right. Hey, Dad, you know, Roland, do you need us to stay on? Or are we good? No, you guys are good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good night. Dan, you're up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening. I think Tina sent you the stuff that I put together. Yep. Uh, PFAS, which is not something that you do because you want to get back and see the rest of the football game. It's a big problem. <laughs> um, I'm trying to keep some levity in this. Uh, obviously, with what's going on, it's it's dropped to a little bit of the back burner for DEP. But uh, they, I'm sure we'll bring it right back up when we get past this current crisis. Uh, if this hadn't happened, probably by about the time we're having town meeting, DEP was going to, was planning to accept these new regulations related to PFAS. Um, the, the long and the short of it is, Massachusetts is looking to set a number of 20 parts per trillion for uh, the sum of six PFASs. Uh, the federal, not regulatory number is 70 for two PFASs, so Massachusetts is, in, in motion to set a, at a significantly more restrictive level for this contaminant. Uh, I think it's the first time ever that that it's gone to the states, but that a lot of a lot of states, uh, at least 18 states, were looking at some form of regulation because the federal government was everybody thought dragging their feet. Um, yeah, we we know our status better than a lot of other towns. Uh, we commented on the regulations and hopefully they'll set a number higher than 20. At this point, it's hard, it's impossible to know. But the reaction that we got from DEP when we got our results that were over 20 at one of our wells is shut it down. Now, uh, okay, fine. So shut it down means water bans, which affect, uh, it happens to be one of our best, our best producing well affects revenue, affects everything, uh, and all, and almost all the wells, or three out of the four wells that supply the heart wrap plant, all have numbers in the 15 to 17 range, close to the, to the proposed MCL. So if they pass this, we, we need to act. And I think it uh, makes sense at the May town, at the June town meeting, to have uh, the funding mechanism in place. Uh, I don't see us needing to spend a lot of the actual money on it or any money or maybe some money on it. But um, if it all falls apart or if the state comes back and sets a number of 30, if it's 30, I mean, our numbers aren't bad. Why, why spend it and open almost $9 million? But um, yeah, this is, this is what we got. We went out to uh, Dennis and I and um, a few other guys went and guys from Wright Pierce met with DEP back in January, I think it was. And at that point it was, you know, uh, it was crisis stage. And the only thing I think working in the favor of them lowering the number is, although they didn't, weren't specific about it, the DEP uh, person from Boston indicated that their preliminary analysis, in other words, they haven't got results from everybody. We, we only started this testing because we had to do put well seven, which is a different number now back online, is that 40, 40 public water suppliers or 39 others are in the same boat that we are. Uh, and the impact it's going to be financially is going to be huge. And um, I think maybe DEP, that may set them back on their heels. Uh, who knows? Uh, it's important to know that uh, the, some of the medical society, uh, the people who have studied it, I'm sure are more want to set a PFAS number of one part per trillion. So it's, it, it's, it's a hot topic in some areas. Uh, I've said it at four or five public meetings, and nobody knows what PFAS is in Bellingham yet, but we will. Uh, so that's what we get going on. So, I mean, I'm not an expert on PFAS by any stretch, but my understanding is PFAS doesn't really exist in nature by itself. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a Teflon. Man it's a, it's it's a man-made. Man well, it's man-made, and there are flat, there are something like four thousand PFAS compounds. Right. So, what's the source of this? 
well, it could, could be, it could be anything. Uh, and at that, at those levels, there's talk about um, solar panel runoff. Uh, this, it's it's likely that the well, the high elevations at well seven, and possibly even down there, had something to do with firefighting, because up until a fairly short time ago, the fire department was using foam with PFAS in it to put out brush fires. And then Steve Steve would have told you we had this discussion. And he knows he was up there on Hartford Ave near those near the gas line and the high tension lines. Brush fires with the PFAS foam. They're using foam now, but it's PFAS free. And there's a you know there's a class a class action suit that will probably be filed and we'll probably get something out of it. But to expect to get eight eight or nine million dollars out of it is unrealistic. But yeah, I mean it's just you know it's uh it, it came on like a literally like a tornado. And DEP was all over it until they don't have time to be all over it anymore. Okay, so I, so I get well. I don't know. Maybe I have a couple questions for your engineers then, because I'm kind of wondering if if this is if this is a limited supply kind of thing where we introduced it because of firefighting or a solar panel. You know, does it by virtue of pumping the water enough go away? And, I, and I, I'm not as an expert on it either. The DEP indicated that it's not as it's not as conducive to that to, to pumping out the plume um, as as some other um, you know oils or whatever. Uh, yeah. In other words, can we, can we keep punching? They did admit it's like yeah, if you, maybe if we pump the well more, the levels will drop a little. And we've seen that there are, are repeat levels were were better after we ran the well for a month and a half because we were running it intermittently, which we typically do in the winter. We don't need that water. So, but it's not a matter of we thinking that we keep pumping it and it's going to go down to zero. It's, it's, you know, it's out there. But that's, so, yeah. I, yeah Don. So, so Don, uh, this is Dan. Um, so currently the EPA standard is 70 parts per trillion. Don't have there, there is no regulatory standard. Oh, there is. There, okay. yeah, so where was it? Oh, so, so was this is the the DEP seventy currently, and they want to reduce it to twenty? What no, did I make? There's up? nothing. Oh, there's nothing. Right, right, right well, there is. There is no regulation with regards to this at all. Okay. And the DEP is looking at potentially introducing a standard of twenty parts per trillion um, CML, I think, or MCL. I guess. Yeah, MCL. Yeah, Max, right. maximum contamination level. Yeah. All right, so that, I did. I, I thought I heard a seventy number earlier. That's why. I was 70, well, seventy is being contemplated by EPA. Oh, okay. seventy. Right. Seventy's out there for. I mean, um, what I got from one of the meetings I went to is, if you have a well that's pumping that's detected at seventy in Vermont, they demand that you shut it off. If you have a source that are feeding the system that's seventy in New Hampshire, they're going to send public notices out. Okay. We've actually got a public notice sitting on sitting in our computer that DEP wants us to issue because of not because of that they're I don't even know what it is. ORG has determined that 20 is is a hazard to pregnant ladies, uh, infants, and fetuses, and that's okay. that's sort of the limit of of concern. It's that it's that group. Right. But Hudson's passing out. I mean, Hudson's numbers are more like 40, mm -hmm. um, but they're passing out bottled water. The, right. you know which we have no desire and you, so you're saying our current level is running averagely between 15 and 17 our, our current level of, of the most recent we did came in with numbers yeah down around right. 17 right. but so our, that, that, our initial testing were were over both at the at the hartford Ave plant discharge okay. and well number 12. right thank you okay <laughs> Yeah. That's exactly the way I feel. <laughs> That's my dog talking. Get in the other room. <laughs> so what's the uh, what's the dollar amount we're looking at? And this well, is they, to this would be the dollar amount to get us or a the, yeah, estimated dollar no amount sense. to get us. Yeah, you just got to know what you're getting into. But we did. You yeah. need to do a pilot study because there's the the two different treatments that are, are somewhat affordable are. Uh, granular activated charcoal and ion exchange resin. Both of them sort of use the same type of filter tank, but it's a different stuff that's inside the tank. And based on not just how much PFAS, but everything else that's in our water, 
determines how quickly you deplete that and have to rejuvenate it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's so the breakdown of the piloting is is really mostly to look at what's going to work, which they both work, but what's going to have the lowest lifetime cost. Because right. every year you have to, or you know, is 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 uh, GAC is going to require to be rejuvenated twice a year. Is ion exchange going to last once a year? But cost, you know, that that's the that's the stuff that they got to balance and work out. Um, mm -hmm. Now, and right, it's, yeah, right, correct me if so. Our the system that we have in right now removes yeah. iron or does not? It removes it removes iron. Yes, that's why we've got we're actually ahead of the game in that. It, the treatment will go after our iron and manganese removal. Right. Okay. But, but you still have, you know, th there's still water quality stuff coming out, out of there that may affect the life of the of the GAC and the or the ion exchange. And either one, it's uh, hundred hundred thousand to one hundred fifty thousand dollar annual cost to deal with rejuvenating uh, the the stuff. Okay, so so we're not really supposed to get all caught up in the in the money piece of this thing, but it's hard not to. So yeah. Yeah. you had two numbers. You 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 kind of said, well, you know, potentially a system could cost as much as eight million dollars to put in, and then we don't know, depending on which one you had, you could have. Um, I think it was a million dollars a year of operating costs, something like that. No, a hundred thousand dollars a year operating. Costs. Okay, Ooh. and then and then and then you had the other part was seven hundred thousand dollars in engineering. Yeah, piloting, pilot permitting, and engineering, right? Okay. So that would be a one. I haven't got a hard proposal on that yet, yeah. but that's right. Pierce need, know, knew they needed to get us something to to, to present because because that's the push is if we miss the window now and and come up with higher levels, we're shutting the well off. So. So that seven hundred thousand would be a a one time cost, and then we're looking at recurring annual costs of about a hundred thousand. That's yeah. The seven hundred thousand is a one-time cost to get us a position to build the to figure out the best the best practice. Plant. Yeah, yeah, to build okay. the plant. All right. I mean, if 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 it looks like this thing is going to go away, which again rarely happens, or they're <laughs> going to set a number that's thirty or forty, then we don't spend hardly any if, or or any. I mean, we won't. We don't. We need to appropriate right. the funds, but if things come down, that if things are. If, you know, maybe now September or October, DEP will be setting the standard. If that standard changes from 20, then we're not in bad shape and we wouldn't do anything. Right. But if it's, if it's at 20, we're, we're just way too close. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, and Bright Pierce admitted these are, these are conservative numbers. They're, they're working them, um, but they're also cautious about if there are 40 systems in Massachusetts that have to treat for this. There are only so many companies that make these, you know, make the stuff, make the right. uh, the filter system or the the big cylinders. John, how many? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mary. Or uh, yeah, Jim, did, am I muted? No, obviously oh, not. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right, I can't tell. Um, so, John. Are there other communities in Massachusetts who have already embarked on um, building or designing and engineering their treatment plants? And yeah. have they shared any lessons learned yet? Because this is sort of a new contaminant. Well, I don't know a lot of lessons learned, but I know that their their air, um, I think, air and Hudson are in, are in design right now, um, going through the process because they're. The Hudson's got the fire has a firefighting training academy nearby that, that's the, their source. Um, Air's got the and military I, and base, they're, and they're closer to the 70 parts per trillion right now, right? Yeah, they're, they're, but I mean, it's sort of whatever it is. You, you put this, you put the stuff in place, and it brings you down to zero or pretty close to zero. Uh, so it, it works, it's proven technology. And a matter of fact, uh, I forget which one, I think Air has got temporary ones set up so that they could keep pumping water, um, Air or Devons, whatever, whatever you want to, one of those up there. So, and I forget which one, but Wright Pierce is the engineer for one, for one of the three or four. So they're, they're involved in it, but nobody's, you know, it's not like somebody's had one online for 10 years. This all, all came about in 2016. Okay. People started thinking PFAS was the, the, it's the new, the new asbestos. It's a miracle compound, but by the way, it's going to kill you. 
Teflon, Teflon, pots and pans, Teflon tape. We're afraid to put Teflon tape in the wells because well, yeah. we're afraid it's going to give us fails. You know? so, so, so to be honest with you, I mean, I was, I'm probably as afraid of this stuff as anybody because I did go see the movie Doc Water. Yeah, that's, and, and, <laughs> that's and, a drive. And if you haven't, you probably want to, and then you'll throw every Teflon pan you have in your house. Um, but I'd like, I personally, I'd like to know a little bit more about this. I mean, it, it sounds like we're headed down a path of, of spending money and setting up a system and we don't know what the hell we're dealing with, or even if that's, this is the best way to deal with it. And that forget about the money for a minute. That is what this committee is supposed to do is take a look at it and say, is this the right thing? Is this what we really need to do? And I don't have the answer for that. I, I don't, I, Donna, I, I appreciate what you're doing, but the fact of the matter is, is I don't think you do either. Well, no, I mean, the DEP's regulations talk specifically about what treatment. So if, if we have to treat, yeah. that's what it is. Uh, it's not, you know, that, and that's what you have, that's part of the deal. You have to permit it through DEP. Yeah. You, you know, that you, you, we junk our plants and, and come back and put a, a, a full, uh, oh, almost like a desalinization level, um, which is crazy. And especially so, with our iron and manganese, manganese levels. So well, who's working those, are, with those are the two. So, so I, so, I Who's I'm more nervous about whether this whole thing changes. I mean, I'm glad we got better numbers, but if the whole regulation changes just because of the outcry, then we're in, we're in fine shape and we shouldn't do it. I can't tell you that right now. So that's the question in my mind is who's outcrying? And first of all, there must have been an outcry to get it to 20. I'm kind of yeah, well, who's yeah, that? The, well, the, uh, the office of, I don't, I don't have it in this memo, the Massachusetts office of something, which obviously is a medical group, uh, determined that 20 was the number. It's the ORG, I forget what the initials stand for. But, but that's, that's the driving force that told them this is what DEP needs to do. Okay. That's, that's their support. Because ironically, a lot of the PFAFs are actually in hospital gowns. <laughs> it's in every. Hmm. Did not know that. You do, you do now. <laughs> <laughs> everything. Well, don't tell me any more about Teflon either, Roland. I got to cook dinner later. That's what it is. That's Teflon. PFAS is Teflon. <laughs> what it is. Uh, okay. I, 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 I'm kind of at a loss on this one. Anybody? So I guess any more conversation or discussion or somebody want to make a motion? or? I've got, I've so, got, I've got a question before we move on. Jim, hello. Yeah, we're here. We're here, Joe. How many how many months of uh, data do we have on this PFAS? Months of data. Yeah. How often do we test every month, every week? It's, it's five hundred. It's five hundred bucks a test a site. So we we don't we have we probably have taken now uh, 13, 14 samples. That's well, it's the whole thing only started, you know, in January. We started, we took a few okay. samples in November and we took, we've taken a bunch in January and we took some in, in um, March. Okay, so well, I'd like to see us have a year of data, you know, to see exactly how it averages out over a year. Oh, believe me, I would too. It's, it's just, you know, it, it's, we, we take the, we take the risk at waiting as if we come back with bad numbers and then tell us we get to shut our water supply down because that's, I mean, that's really what they, they were, that's, I couldn't believe it. The first, the guy calls us, can you shut that well off? Like it was, you know, putting cyanide into the system or something. It so, was so, pretty, so did you say no? I said, no. <laughs> I said, no, we can't shut it off. Okay. So we, we can but shut it like, off now oh, and maybe, and maybe through April, but we can't shut it off in the summer and expect it. Well, that, that's what I mean. When we get to the summer months, I'd be curious as to what kind of numbers we get, especially if the well is getting more usage oh, if the number too. comes down. So, so Don, Don, what you... would happen? What would happen if you had to shut that down? What if there were a catastrophe tomorrow at that well? well? If, what if, would happen? If we shut that, if we had to shut that well down, then we're on a, a mandatory. Uh, total water ban. Maybe we can do one day a week, depending on how much rain we get. Then, if some other okay. some other well in the system goes down, then we can't keep the tank levels up. So you're you're running a mechanical failure issue that you know 
it's just and you know the DP saying, "Well, buy it from another town." Midway hasn't tested. Frank, Franklin hasn't tested. Blackstone's tested, but they haven't got the water to spare. And Milford hasn't tested. You know, they, their water may not be any better than ours. So it's like, how do you have that as a fallback unless you know what everybody stands? So, so Don, if to be required to shut down would be as if the legislation went into place that it's twenty parts per trillion, right? And yeah, we exceeded that. So yeah. we we're Even waiting the DC, on they're going to tell you that the OR, the ORG is sufficient for us to put out public notifications and possibly even shut the well down. So I, I don't you know I don't know where they get I think that's a regulatory thing, but huh. I don't know. that's fantastic. Isn't it's, that good news? But it's but great. they haven't shut down Hudson and Air, right? The two that are currently in design, they haven't shut them down. Water. Bottle yeah. of water. Yeah, yeah, they're distributing bottled water, so. Everybody, so nobody's nobody. Well, I, I know Hudson is. Hudson still is. I'm not sure what Air is doing. How do you Air take got, a shower? Got, Air, Air, because of the military involvement, got got army money to to put at least what's in place now, which I think is is still uh, a temporary, like a skid thing, which we, we were looking at getting. But the cost of the skid thing is, is a skid's not a skid. It's just not permanently installed filter units. It just sitting out there which don't, doesn't work real well in January. So is this just drinking water? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Adjust? <laughs> well, no, no, but I mean. All comes out of one pipe. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I get it, but you know, we're, we're, we're handing out bottled water and I think Mary just touched on this. How do you take a shower? You can still take showers. You can still, you know, clean your dishes if you will, but it's. <laughs> it it's still, tough on fans, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll keep my mouth shut in the shower. That's fine. <laughs> like I said, I, like, I, I said earlier, it's it is pregnant women, their fetuses, and newborns. That's that's the risk. That's the risk group. Okay. The rest of us may have. Every, yeah, guarantee every one of us in the developed world has PFAS in our bloodstream at some level. Something like ninety nine percent of the population of the world. Yeah, they, has. yeah. Almost almost everybody has it because Teflon's yeah. been around so long. Yeah, 40, some 30, yeah. 40 years. Huh? Yep. All right. So uh, let me just, I want to go back just on one thing. So so you said you, you've done X number of tests. My, my I guess my question is, is do we have, do we have like a history of tests per well or is it just one test per well? No, we've, but we've tested, we tested the wells in the south, which are good. And we've tested the wells in the north now uh, three times for number seven twice for number eight, and I think it's be the third time for number 12, second time for number five. And again, it's, it's $500 a whack. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the most expensive because it's, it's actually $250, but you have to, you have to do a field blank. You have to do a blank. The, the lab gives you a, a PFAS free bottle and you collect two bottles, one from your sample and one, of, one you dump in the blank. Uh, because when you're talking about parts per trillion with a T, you know, it's, you could have something in the air. You could have uh, somebody's wearing a, you know, a waterproof golf shirt and the wind blows through the door and you get PFAS off of that into the, into well, the samples. And, it's and, crazy. And, you know, and that's, to me, that's part of the problem with this is, you know, I wasn't kidding when I said, by the way, they use this in surgical gowns and stuff like that. The stuff in the hospital yeah. has PFAS in it. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I kind of shrug my shoulders at this because it, it just kind of is. But I, I guess where I'm going with this is with the testing that we've had, we've had one test that was over 20. We've had, we've had uh, a couple of tests that were over 20. Well, well, number seven, when we put it back online, which is now 23, that was over 20. Well, number 12 was over 20. We had, and when we did well number 12 at that point, we also sampled at the heart crab plant and that was over 20, which is not surprising because nothing in our filtering system is going to reduce that. Nothing is going to, you know, if it, go, if it comes out of the well at 20.5, chances are it's going to come out of the plant at 20.5 or 20.4, you know, 20.49. It's not going to be like, you know, cleaned up. It's nothing that we're doing is going to. I understand that. that. I'm just trying to figure out. But yeah. right now, right now, none of them are. <laughs> Must be Rochester telling me. But...
Thank you for paying your credit card on time. You are important. Yeah, that my computer software. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, at this point, I mean, I'm just, there's so many unknowns. Yeah. Uh, I'm at the point where I'm just ready to take no action at this point. Yeah. Uh, you know, my opinion. I'd like to get, uh, well, personally, I'd like to get more information. I and, and if the state implements something, I don't think that they can implement it overnight anyway. And I guess I'd be curious about that. <laughs> you, would, you would think. <laughs> well, like I said, they were talking about about june or july having it in, having regulations in place but of course that's deferred now and then there, you know we, we've already done our testing so there's there is testing that needs to be done it starts in october for anybody who hasn't done anything if the regulation were to pass in september yeah, so maybe, yeah i mean you've never done any testing done you're doing too damn much testing yeah well we're, we were asked to do so by dep and once you once we knew we were in trouble it's like why not know how bad the trouble could be I mean, it would be, you know, it's just crazy. Do I have a, do I have some kind of motion at this point? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to have uh, no action at this point. Okay. Do I have a second to that? If, if something comes up okay. and changes as far as the, the situation we're in now, um, and it looks like the regulations are going to hit, we think we need to revisit it. What, anything specific, any other information you want me to put together? I mean, I can completely understand. I mean, I think this is a little bit nuts. I think Massachusetts has gone off the deep end. Um, but anyway, that's if it's a regulation, we can't move, uh, Mr. We can't move the Mr. entire Mr. town out of state. So. Mr. Chairman. I, I, Joe, Joe, go ahead. I, I understand we're probably going to take no action, but I would like to see a funding mechanism so we could do a series of tests on a monthly basis just so we could have some raw data because Don, you said earlier that the more you use the well, there's a chance that it goes down a little bit. A couple of those wells had not been used to their full capacity. I mean, it may be, be to a point where in the winter time we don't need the water. We're going to have to run the wells and just dump it into the wetlands and, uh, you know, hope we can keep the numbers down. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we can run those wells and shut the other wells off. Uh, operationally, that's not a problem. It's a, it's a problem with, D, with another regulation of DEP. But we can tell them to go pound sand on one or the other. But that's, you know, and I, I agree. Whether we want to start doing, you know, doing monthly sampling, it's even at that, it's, um, we're not talking about something that's capital improvement, $50,000 values. No, um, I mean, but a bump, it, on the, a bump in a budget, a bump, you know. Yeah, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to speak a little bit off kind of the line of what I guess they normally do, but. I'd almost like to see some small amount of money. And when I'm saying that, I'm meaning like, you know, $20,000 or something for the engineers to take a look at this and understand what other opportunities there are, if there are any, or at least give us a white paper on what some of this means that they've, exa they've examined possibilities other than a contaminant filtration system. In other words, does it decrease? If Because this is not, it, it, I go back to this, to the best of my knowledge, it's non-existing in nature. Correct. So it's there by virtue of somebody put it there. And um, which means it's not going to be there forever. If we're going away from using the stuff that might have put it there, then, then we get rid of it at some point. So I, I'm just kind of reluctant to spend eight or nine million dollars and be on the hook for maintenance and operations for the rest of our lives. Something that may be gone in a year. But so, so Mary, if you're still listening, so is this something that mm -hmm. could be the testing, I guess, could be funded from the, either the water capital or the water enterprise? So we went at a previous meeting, correct me if I'm wrong, Don, and I can pull it up here. Um, we asked for the balance of the reserve fund um, for this very purpose, to do the testing and to begin uh, our investigation of a PFAS issue. Do you remember one of the previous meetings I came to, guys? Oh, it was FinCom. I'm sorry, not Capital. It was FinCom. Yeah, sorry. I see Tina, so I just immediately think FinCom. <laughs> um, and we had requested um, access to that funding for, for this very issue. So, Don, is that where you're charging the testing out of? Well, I mean, it's, it's not a line item. The testing's going out of treatment. I mean, out well, of... Um, so, we, we moved it to professional services. Yeah, yeah. But that, well, yeah. professional services are 
usually there's a line item for uh, for analysis because we have a lot of analysis. That's what I've been paying it out of. But yeah, I mean, we can we can proceed. You know, I've got the bottles <laughs> right in my office uh, to continue doing testing, do it on a monthly basis. I think that's I think that's a good idea, um, and I'll run it right up to the limit of the budget this year because. Things are tight. Yeah. We've also been hit okay. with some, some significant expenses related to improving our worker safety uh, from the whole OSHA change. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so we're covering the budget. Yeah, actually, we, re we, we requested the full 50000 and it was yeah. specifically and for P PFAS issues. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, we then we do have a funding mechanism in place for testing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, we, we, can, we, can test, we can definitely test up to July, to July 1st. Was what okay. we got, mm -hmm. and and I actually put some more money in for next year. I didn't like put it up to, to test every month. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe we'll look at revising the water budget and doing that. All right, okay. perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, do we need any action on that? I guess not, right? I don't think so. Doesn't sound nope. it. Okay. Do we have anything else with the agenda, Tina? Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Roll in real quick. Um, yeah, right Deputy Chief Poirier uh, gave me a call while we were having that discussion, and he had heard back from Pam and stated that no additional cost for service is her understanding. She Great. They just wanted it on the record. You mean it's not in there, or it's not going to cost us anything for service? It's not going to cost us anything, according to Pam. Why do I find that amazing? Yeah. I, can I double check that? Would you please? Because I can't do yeah. that for a minute. We, you can't buy anything without being on the hook for additional costs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Tina, anything else? That's all I have. Okay. In that case, to adjourn. he has more discussion. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Move to adjourn. Oh, I second Joe. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you, Tina. Good night, everybody. Good night, folks. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you, nice. Tina. Thank you, Jim, very much for handling this. Yeah, nice yeah. job, Jess. Thanks, Thank Mary. You. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Okay. Take Have care.